Salah is a gift, as we all know, given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is important that we consider it a gift because some people consider Salah a burden. If we consider it a burden, we will not be able to achieve the broader blessings of Salah. There are several categories of people. The first are those who don't read Salah, yet they want to call themselves Muslimin. And the Prophet says in a correct narration, he says the distinguishing factor between us and the disbelievers is Salah. It is the distinguishing factor. You want to know if a person is a Muslim or not, all you need to look at is the Salah. If the Salah is in order, it would show that they are believers. If the Salah is not in order, they have a lot to improve. So this is a very, very important narration. First category of people, they want to call themselves Muslim, but they don't want to fulfill the basic gift of Islam. The second category of people are those who call themselves Muslim and they fulfill their Salah, but considering it a burden, they find it tough. They are lazy. They come last minute and they go out first. The last one's in and the first one's out. Subhanallah. In that case, it depends on the individual and the type of link they have with Allah. They have a lot to improve. We need to improve our link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for this reason, we say it's not good enough for us to consider Salah a burden, even though we are fulfilling it. There is a step higher than that which we need to get to. So there are people who read Salah because they have to read it. They have to do it, so they do it. But there is the highest category of people. Those are the ones who read Salah because they want to read it. Not because they have to, because they want to. So you find that they are doing it, considering it a gift of Allah. These are the ones whom when they come into the house of Allah, they forget everything outside the house of Allah, which is not related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you notice, we, Masha'Allah, because we have a carpet in the masajid these days in a beautiful, clean environment, we remove our shoes outside. Similarly, remove all your things that will connect you to this world outside the door. When you come inside, you need to be able to stand, concentrating for the sake of Allah. I'm sure we've heard such a beautiful verse. Stand for the sake of Allah with total submission, concentration, humility, conviction, and with the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Such a person will be able to reap the benefit of salah. Do you know that if you were to fulfill one salah with jama'ah in the proper way, and then you are to fulfill the next salah with jama'ah in the proper way, it would act as an expiation of the minor sins between the two salahs. The minor sins, the Prophet ﷺ says, Follow a bad deed with a good deed in order to wipe out the bad deed. Some people don't understand it. They think you can go and murder someone and then go for hajj. You can steal their money and then go for hajj and everything will be deleted. No, that's not what the hadith means. It is speaking here about minor sins, small things that happen on a daily basis. You might have done something, you might have said something minor and so on. You know, there might be a few little small things that happen which we know or we don't know sometimes. When we follow up with a charity or a good deed or a salah, automatically we find that these minor sins have disappeared. They will go away. As for the major sins, they require what is known as tawbah, what is known as repentance. You need to turn to Allah in repentance and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness for the major sins. You need to admit the sin. You need to regret it. You need to ask Allah's forgiveness and you need to promise not to do it again. Those are the major sins. So getting back to the issue of salah, we enter the house of Allah. The question I have, do you feel that this is the house of Allah? You know, if you are entering the house of a huge businessman or a prince or someone big, a king or a leader or an amir, 
you would feel that I'm entering this big house. Perhaps there is surveillance here. Perhaps there is this person here. Perhaps, you know, I need to carry myself well. What is the impression this man is going to get of me? Let me apply a little bit of perfume. Let me look smart and decent. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya bani adam khudu zinatakum inda kulli masjid. Beautiful verse. O oh, children of Adam. You need to adorn yourself with your beauty when it comes to entering the houses of prayer, the place of sajda. When you want to connect with Allah, dress clean clothes. You must be smelling good. You must be looking good. You must be within a specific level of purity known as tahara. Tahara meaning cleanliness of a certain nature. You cannot read salah without wudu. You, you need the ablution. So, when you're entering the house of Allah, ask yourself a question. Do I feel the calmness? Do I feel the serenity? Do I feel like I've entered a beautiful place? It's a question. I have come across some non-Muslims who have visited some masajid. You know, nowadays in the Western world, we have an open day where sometimes we have to welcome the non-Muslims. They want to see what is Islam all about. So they enter the masjid, they come. And some of them have told me that we bear witness. The minute we turn the corner with our car, we noticed some feeling of peace. When we saw this house of Allah, amazing. The non-Muslim is telling you, when I entered this, there is some amazing serenity. So some of the ulama, they say, how can a non-Muslim feel the serenity of the house of Allah? But it's common sense, they are human beings. They will also feel a spirituality in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they have the right intention and the right heart, they will feel a goodness. So if the non-Muslims are telling me and you that we feel some calm atmosphere in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how come we as Muslims do not feel the calm in the house of Allah sometimes? Why is it that we find our own children and offspring away sometimes from the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Perhaps our intention needs to be rectified. Let me quickly take you through the first part of the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu, which I sh I'm sure a lot of us should know of by heart. It is the hadith where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sending Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu to Yemen, common hadith, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Inna ka ta'ti qawman ahla kitab falyakun awwala ma tad'uhum ilayh shahadat an la ilaha illa Allah wa anni Rasulullah. You will find some people who will be people of the book, O Mu'adh. First thing you should do to them, call them towards Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. Call them towards worshipping Allah alone, sincerity for Allah, declaring Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa as the final messenger. This includes obviously believing in the previous messages and believing in the previous books and coming down and understanding how Muhammad is a messenger of Allah and believing it. Then he says, فَإِنْهُمْ أَطَاعُوكَ لِذَلِكْ فَأَعْلِمْهُمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ افْتَرَضَ عَلَيْهِمْ خَمْسَ صَلَوَاتٍ فِي كُلِّ يَوْمٍ وَلَيْلَةٍ If they follow that, then let them know that Allah has prescribed upon them, which means he has made compulsory for them, five salah during the day and night, five salah. Now I want to stop there, because when we do not achieve the benefit or the serenity of the house of Allah, and if we do not achieve the peace through reading salah, it means there is something wrong with our shahada. This is what it means. Why? Because the first step is to accept the shahada, and to understand that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger. And if you worship Allah alone without engaging in any form of polytheism or what is known as shirk, and if you are conscious of the worship of Allah alone, you've developed a direct link with your maker and you firmly believe that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent to me and you to show us how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to show us why we have been created in this world and to lead us towards paradise and that he is the final messenger and his message is final and totally complete 
then only you will be able to benefit from Salah. But when we are involved in innovation, how can we benefit from Salah? We come to the masjid, our heart is not there. When we are involved in association of partnership with Allah or some shirkiyat, some little uh, polytheism and so on, which is obviously a major sin, then how can we benefit from Salah? We won't. We will find it a burden. We will not be able to develop a link with Allah. Today, on the globe as a whole, people are searching for peace. People are searching for inner contentment. Do you know that the Prophet ﷺ used to tell Bilal ibn Rabah, Arihna biha, ya Bilal. What is he speaking about? He says, Oh Bilal, let that comfort come through it. Through what? Through the Adhan. Go and call out the Adhan. We will achieve the comfort of that Adhan. Amazing. I recall these beautiful words of success that we hear so many times a day. And in this country, mashallah, the country of Qatar, beautiful Muslim country, we are so fortunate to be hearing the Adhan, not just from one Mi'dana or Minara, but from so many different places. You are spoilt for choice as to where to go for Salah. You want to hear a beautiful long recitation, mashallah, there is a masjid, you can go, you can take a little bit of time. And subhanallah, if you are in a little bit of a rush, Allah forgive us, and you are one of those who are speedy Gonzales, you know, you want to get to a masjid where they finish in no time, you can find that masjid as well. May Allah forgive us, our shortcoming, we are human beings. You know, come time for Ramadan, it's round the corner, inshallah. People fall in different categories. Salah has a blessing. When you come and you fulfill your salah for the sake of Allah, and you know, you're, you concentrate, you are thinking, you are worshipping Allah. You know the, the hadith of Ihsan, where the Prophet ﷺ says, you worship Allah as though you are seeing him. And if you cannot see, then at least you should know that he is watching you. And when you get to that level, it's amazing. Some people, what they do, come Salat at Taraweeh, they look for the masjid, which finishes in five minutes. Five minutes, pecking on the ground, you know, top, bottom, in, out, salam, alaykum as salam, out. Is that salah? We have a beautiful month of Ramadan. You have, mashallah, fasting, may Allah grant us the month of Ramadan. You have so much ibadah, so much charity. Why do we want to waste all that? Just because we cannot spend 10, 15 minutes. I have at one stage in my life heard people who say, brother, that masjid finishes in 10 minutes. Let's go there. Do you know what they do? After salah, they stand outside and they are talking for one hour. By that time, the others are coming out. Look at shaitan. After salah, they sit outside the masjid. They are chatting, they are smoking, they are doing anything. But for one hour, they are sitting outside. So couldn't we have spent a little bit more time inside the house of Allah? This is what we say. You want the blessings of salah, you need to rectify your shahada. And when we say rectify your shahada, it sounds simple, but it's a very deep statement. It means become a good Muslim. You know, enter into submission in totality. Ya O you who believe, enter into submission in totality, in totality, holistically. Not only every one of us, but on top of that, every aspect of submission, submit to it. Don't just submit to whatever suits you. And then whatever does not suit you, don't submit to it. Astaghfirullah. You have a man reading salah, and the other hand is in the nightclub drinking alcohol. Can that salah benefit him? It's like, you know, Astaghfirullah, Allah protect us. I know we're in a Muslim country, but I have seen in South Africa, that people told me there is a huge casino. You know where they gamble? Huge casino. And in the casino, it's so big. They have so many different departments. They have a musalla. Wallahi, without a joke, they have a musalla. So they told me, do you know why? Because those who come to gamble, a lot of them are Muslim. And they do not miss their salah. And they make dua. Oh Allah, I'm going to gamble. Grant me success. Look at how we have become so weak 
that we think before you go to steal, read two rakat of salah to say, Ya Allah, I'm going to rob that man tonight. Inshallah, I don't get caught. Ya Allah, help me. I'm making two rakat. Astaghfirullah. But this is the mentality of man. It is happening. May Allah protect us. So Allah says, Oh, you who believe, enter into submission in totality. Your salah will not benefit you if you have not removed from your heart the love for that which is wrong.